Good day to all you good people out there. This is Rita Mavunda with Tashana Investment Africa, and you are here today on our page, TIA Marketplace. And as you guys know, this is where we talk about all things business, starting a business here, but we also talk about our different products. And so today I wanted to do something for the men folk. We do a lot of things for the ladies because obviously lady boss here. However, I did not forget about the other half. And so for you men folk, today what we wanted to say, Did you just say the other half? The other half. It can be a half when you're black steel. <laughs> this guy. So guys, what I wanted you guys to do today is dun -da -da -da, my good friend here, Richie. Richie is a big spiritualist. He is really big on really understanding oneself, doing the time, the energy, and the effort to go inside of yourself to be able to learn yourself better, present yourself better. But more importantly, we are always in the quest to understand ourselves better. And so I thought it would be a really good idea to have a gentleman come on the show to be able to speak to our male audience about spirituality and manliness and how do we reconcile that especially being in a very patriarchal society and also being in a very religious society right so richie introduce yourself to the good people and let the good people know what are we discussing on today even though i gave you a snippet but you know what i'm saying um greetings to everyone in the video um um all protocols observed so I greet everyone in whichever uh, space they are in. So whether it is Jumbo, Hello, Tayo, Ase, Lesedi, all corners of the world. I am nothing, but I go by the titles Jegawa Mutaka. That's my indigenous name, which is just a title. You are not your name. Those can change. Um, business name is Richie because of Body by Richie. I am a fitness trainer which is nothing more but a passion. Apart from that, I'm a spiritual guru. Did I use the word guru? You did, you did. I you used did. the word Call, guru. You called yourself guru. Ah, mm. <laughs> maybe I should use the word coach. Oh, or Buddy a teacher. Sam Goma. Yeah, or a shaman. Mm. That works. Mm. So many titles. But then again, at the end of the video, you tell me who I am to you. Thank you, uh, Rita Mabunda, TIA Toshana, for having me in the show. And so we'll be speaking matters of... She called me a gentleman. I was flattered. I prefer using the term gentleman. Because in this world, we have nothing like a man and woman. Otherwise, you'll be going saying, that's a man cow. That's a woman cow. We have males and females. Thoughts and feelings. Thank you, Rita. Mm. So, Richie, I know that you are definitely someone, as you said a man of many talents, a man who is engaged in many things. However, you do have a growing number of people who have been coming to you lately for just kind of more of a spiritual guidance, right? Yeah. Not really saying, let's go to a church, let's say, let's go to temple, mosque, whatever your <laughs> denomination is. But you have now slowly been finding more people, especially age mates, right? Yeah. Where they are now coming to you looking for something a little bit bigger, something a little bit more encompassing, right? Yeah. Especially with COVID, I think COVID changed a lot of people's minds, right? Whether good or bad, the point is, is that there has been a change and a flux. So can you tell us like maybe a little bit of what kind of questions are you getting from like your male population and kind of what are you guiding them, helping them say, to be able to find a more, um, let's say, just to maybe a more holistic way of looking at things, right? Because yeah. you can find a lot of things in religious text, right? However, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to think about different things, right? Like, as you said earlier, a name is just a name, but it can mean so many different things. Yeah. So let the people know. Yeah, so... Um... During the two years that we had the lockdown, um, basically because a lot of people had to stay at home, a lot of people had to be, you know, with the limited contact with the people outside, a lot of people had to do what you can call in-searching. By default, when you are staying at home, that's when you start realizing how alone you can be. Mm. Because though you are in for two years, 
there was a possibility that this could happen again or this could be extended. No one knew when it was going to end. So a lot of people went into their inside to look for answers. Who am I really without uh, the freedom that I have, without the people outside of, uh, you know, your walls and everything? For example, a lot of people didn't have a life before the lockdown because their life revolved around work. The people, places and things they see every day outside from their walls. But now people had to stay at home and the world being um, not so very fair on people based on uh, the things that we have to do uh, to secure what you call um, safety, stability, shelter and, and security, which means work. Now people all of a sudden for the first time that was threatened. And so people were like, if I don't have these things, which give me safety, security, uh, meaning the people who lost their jobs. So who am I really without these things outside of me? So that forced a lot of people to start even questioning themselves, their belief systems. So we have a God. So what is this God doing about the situation? I'm losing my job. I have my children. Do we really have a God? Like for the first time ever, even to the point that they closed the churches. So who is mm. bigger? Is the government bigger than the churches? You know, because a lot of the time people have had this mentality that God is everything. He's above. He means everything. So if they are closing your places of worship, that had a lot of people questioning even their belief systems. Like, wait a minute. I can't That's even true. go to church. That's true. I can't even go to my place of solace, worship, shelter, where they run to. Like, the la even the last place I should be running to is taken away because, you know, Sometimes when people get cornered, the only thing they can turn to is their, in quotes, inner God or their spiritual side or their spiritual guidance. So this has opened a can of spiritual worms for everyone. No puns intended or puns <laughs> intended. <laughs> because for the first time, people are looking at life like there must be something outside of this. There must be something outside of the norm, outside of the matrix. So are you in the world? Or are you of the world? So those are some of the questions that people have been coming to me with. Um, mm -hmm. Even to the point people are asking me, mm. Richie, who am I? I'm like, how can I answer you that? Mm -hmm. You know who you are. So now when people are asking you, right, because that's like a very theoretical question, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And it's and I agree with you, right? Like yeah. someone else cannot really answer that for yeah. you, right? You've got to be able to know. You've got to do the work to figure yourself out, yeah. right? Because once you're good, everybody around you is good, yeah. or at least that's what I say. If I'm not good, nobody around me is going to yeah. be good. So you got to be able to take that time. So now, what are some of the things that these gentlemen who are coming to you asking you that, right? Where it's like this big theoretical question. What now are you saying to them to at least help them maybe take those first steps? to getting to know themselves? So the thing is, um, this weekend, I actually had someone come to me and he said, um, only after watching my videos, did they realize that how unhappy they were. So these are the people who even during COVID, uh, COVID time would leave the house, drive five minutes from the house and just park the car and come back in the evening to feel like they have been working the whole day because that is the only life they knew. They don't have a social life. We had, uh, remember pre-COVID times, we had people who would usually show up in the house around 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Mm. These are the people after work is a drink. Mm. So they didn't even know their spouses. They didn't even know their children. But they were forced by the restrictions, the curfews, to be home. So they had to learn their partners mm -hmm. for the first time in their lives. Their children for the first time in their lives after staying with them for years. And... This was hard for some people because you can understand someone you've been living with for 10, 15 years. And this is for the first time, actual time, you're spending time together to get to know them. And everyone is on edge. Um, I had people coming like last weekend and someone come to me and he said, Richie, you know, before this, before watching your videos, I felt irrelevant because I had to leave the house even if I didn't have work because that is all I had. Mm -hmm. Now, um, a lot of the male because you know most of the males come to me but it's a balanced equation i actually have more female clients who come to me to balance that equation but even now the males are opening up because i almost kind of feel like you know like women generally we have always been more 
you know, we, we talk more about our feelings, right? Even when you speak to your girlfriends, you are going to be talking about like kind of what you're going through, how you're mm -hmm. feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And for men being socialized to be in one particular way, right? Being stoic, don't express yourself, don't do all of that. And kind of what happens, it's, it's backfired, right? Because guess what you've learned and especially kind of what you're saying, men actually also have a lot of feelings, right? Yeah. Men have a lot of internal issues that they are dealing with that they don't know how to express themselves. And because you don't have an outlet and because you don't have a voice to be able to speak it properly, right? You do end up having a lot of suicides that have been coming, right? Like the number of suicides here in Kenya, it's gone up, right? It has really, really gone up. Men generally feel their sense of self from the ability to provide. Yeah. So now if you don't have a job and you cannot provide, now that feeling of inadequacy probably rears its head a lot, right? So now with these guys, what are you going, what do you suggest to them, like in terms of what are the baby steps that they can take to start to know themselves, right? Because it is true, the number of divorces during COVID went up, right? Because it was exactly that. Domestic you, violence. Domestic violence numbers went up like crazy because now people were stuck in the house with people. And then you realize because you haven't taken the time to learn yourself, it's like, not only do I not know myself, not only do I not know my partner or my kids, I don't even like them, <laughs> right? There was a lot like, look, I know I got a lot of phone calls from a lot of my girlfriends, like, girl, this husband of mine and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, I mean, well, you chose him, right? Like you decided that's what you wanted to do. So don't call me with the silly nonsense, right? But yeah. you do have to be able to give them small steps. So what are some of the things you're giving them where they can say, hey, listen, look, shit is bad, but, you know, you've still got a whole life that you have to lead, right? So. Yeah. So, for the sake of this video, I'm going to use the terms man and woman. But you have to understand that we have male and female. So, man or male is thought, what you call thoughts, what you call Adam, what you call uh, all these Shiva, not this name, Shiva and uh, the, uh, the masculine and the feminine. So, the women are female, feminine, okay? Feelings, emotions, we are thought masculine we push out so one of the things that i've been telling uh the males out there is to be in touch with their feminine side to okay. be more feeling okay. because men are led more by thought that is why men react mm -hmm. because they are just thinking mm -hmm. without putting in the feeling behind it so uh for example if people are, are involved in a domestic violence or if i'm shoving rita away i'm not thinking about how she's going to feel about that or why the feeling that i have that has forced me to push her away. While for the women, she's not going to pick the masculine, the pushing off. She's going to pick up the feeling, oh, this man hates me at this particular moment. Or this man is feeling this way against me. Thought and feeling. So now I've been reminding them because I can't teach anyone anything. You know everything. Otherwise, there's no way you'd be born in this world. You know everything in this world. There's no way for you, you'd be existing in the existence if you didn't know. It's just that you have forgotten how to. So it has been more about getting in touch with their feminine side, to be more feeling about their thought. Male or men are 60% masculine and you have your 40% feminine. The same for the women. They are 60% feminine, 40% masculine. And the 10% difference is the sexual organs you choose that's your 10 percent that is why i have what you can call a chest i won't even call them breasts but i have i do have nipples you know what i'm saying shout out to other people who love their nipples even with their piercings so i do have nipples that means i have the feminine side otherwise why would i need them i'm not suckling anything but they can be sucked on so you know what i'm saying so <laughs> so it's just reminding the men to be more in touch with their feminine side to me to, to put in tap into that and this is the secret of the world as men you are in this world to learn to be like a woman not to be like a woman but to learn to be like her aka you're supposed to be like your opposite sex okay. learn to be feminine that is why rita i'll give you an example if you have a picture mm. of a man mm. with tears down his face let's say something has happened in a country it will be splashed on the newspaper it will be a bestseller Mm -hmm. By default, they have to sell out all the newspapers because there was a man with tears on the eyes. 
but it's not the tears that sell the newspaper it's the fact that that man is in touch with his feminine side so everybody looks at the man like oh he's crying but your spirit knows he's in touch with this feminine he's feeling something whether it's sadness for maybe someone um a loss a big loss yeah, the same sure. way for the females if you have a female who goes against the men not fight against the men but do manly stuff like you know fight for freedom and everything shout out to harry tubman shout out to angari madai here in kenya for you know protecting the forest and everything so we love that because that woman was in touch with the masculine side aka we are saying no you can't cut the trees we are saying no we are going to free these uh, slaves and everything so you're in this world to exercise your opposite which is your feminine if you're a male as a woman you're supposed to be exercising your opposite which is have more thought don't just be all in your feelings like the way women do all they do is getting groups or subgroups expressing their feelings oh i'm feeling like this you can't do shit with feelings you have to have some thought aka okay. if that man is abusive pick up your shit and leave that's true too that's true mm -hmm. too so now what do you get for instance with the men like now you're saying to them all right look you've got to get more in touch with your feminine side you've got to get more in touch with your feeling side what kind of resistance are you receiving from these guys like have you had any of these guys because i know like richie and i talk quite a bit so i definitely know in his repertoire he definitely has had a few guys where you know at first it's like i don't want to do this and now they call you all the time like oh there's this lady i like and i want to be friends with her but she's not you know blah 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 so like kind of what's some of the resistance you've received from a man that you have told try to get more into your feminine side that's the first question and then back to the same question i asked you before what are some of like because you know people like solutions yeah. right yeah. and i know with you the kind of the way you think you're a little bit more of like a big picture person and kind of like in all of this big picture because you have the tools already to be able to know everything it's now your responsibility to tap into that to be able to find those answers right mm -hmm. however i think it's a lot harder yeah than to than to say so right mm -hmm. so give like an actual solution give like maybe like three things that a man can think about to allow for him to tap into his feminine side, AKA being able to express the feeling side more uh, positively without feeling uh, maybe shame or feeling, um, you know, like, oh God, now I'm gonna be like a girl, yeah. you know, future is female, <laughs> mm -hmm. continue. So men around the world have been taught to be a man. You know, you are told to tag it out. You are told to suck it up. And one of the things that they have to realize and be ready to embrace is that that is a program. You can be telling a man to thug it out when he's, you know, for, you know, when you have your, your dick in the dirt, you have nothing to do. You are at your lowest. You have lost your job. You have nothing to do. And you are being told to thug it out. How are you going to thug it out? You have to embrace your feelings and be able to express yourself and look, hey, I need help. Mm -hmm. I need to, I, I really need a hands up or something because, you know, men have been told that it's shameful because like Rita said, we see ourselves like the providers all the time. You know, you're expected to be out there to give, mm -hmm. but just the fact that you embrace that you need the help, it doesn't even have to come because your psyche knows, your subconscious knows the moment you cry for help, you're not even actually crying for help to the people, places, and things that surround you, but you are telling whatever, whether you want to call it your God, your force, whatever you are calling, your subconscious, but you are giving that cry of help like, hey, I need help. Maybe your angels, your demons, whatever protects you, is going to be realized like, okay, finally, we need to step in and help this guy. So one of the things is to stop with these programs of you're supposed to suck it up all the time, you're supposed to tag it out. No, if you really need help, ask for it ask for help it's manly to ask for help right now we have everyone campaigning they are begging for votes that's crying for help all that campaigning they are asking they are begging they are crying for help please vote for me please do this for me that's mm -hmm. actually calling for help mm -hmm. and then when they get whatever they want now they can you know behind behind their tinted cars and tell you to all oh, go fuck yourself until another five years come you know <laughs> 
So FYI, one. in Kenya right now, we are having a whole presidential <laughs> election. We are, I think, what is it? The last day to campaign is August 6th. Days to go. <laughs> and then um, August 9th, I am definitely going to be one of these American passport holders where I will be running. I am going right back to the MIA 305 Dade County because I don't want the smoke. I don't want none of that that's going on out here. But that's just to give you an idea of what he's saying about campaigning. <laughs> So the first thing is, gentlemen, yeah. ask for help. Ask for help. And so what you're saying is that there's no shame in asking for help. There is no shame in saying that you need some support, some assistance, just something to help you to lessen the burden that maybe you are shouldering and carrying around and you don't have to, right? Yeah. All right, so that's a good one. Give me another one. Uh, another thing that you can do this is uh, simply just speaking about it. So there's a difference be between asking for help okay. and speaking about it. Give me, give me the distinction. Why are you saying so it's that? So when you are speaking about it, you're actually finding solutions for yourself. Okay, I get that. Okay. So when you're saying it's like you're asking for help, that's like when you're going outside of yourself. Outside so of AKA yourself. like, um, uh, Richie, I need uh, my car to be fixed, argument's sake, right? Yeah. So now if I'm coming to you and I say, Richie, can you help me do this? Mm -hmm. Now you're going to give me the solution. Yeah. However, if now, let's say we're just talking and it's mm -hmm. like, you know, this car is kind of broken down. Maybe it might be the engine mm -hmm. part. Maybe it might be the oil or whatever. Mm -hmm. By speaking about it out loud, yeah. I'm almost in essence talking to myself talking out loud to, to help myself come up with my own idea. Yeah. And when all you're right. talking to yourself, you're talking to God, a.k.a. These are all those Ezekiel visions. Moses visions. How about you have your own visions, aka you have your own burning bush. You are having conversations with yourself. You are not sheltering. You are admitting, okay, Richie, we are in shit. We need to fix this. And because sometimes you are going to ask for help and not get it. Because again, men are seen like, you know, if I hit Rita, hey Rita, I need like 50 Rita, I'll be like, what? What? You need 500? For what? I mean, you are a man. You're supposed to figure it out. Some, Give me some 500. Time. You see what I'm saying? So you find that now when you are having conversations with yourself, true, raw conversations with yourself, a.k.a. being accountable that you are fucked up, you planted the wrong seeds, you're in the wrong relationship, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, the wrong associations, the wrong job, okay? Now you're having man talk with self now. Mm. Conversations with self, mm -hmm. self reflection. Shout out to the late Michael Jackson. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. So now you are self reflecting. You are having real conversations with yourself. I like and that. sometimes I like that. You really do need to have those self reflecting conversations with self. I like that. I definitely do that. You know, no. sometimes like if I'm really feeling something in my head, sometimes mm -hmm. I'll look at myself in the mirror and mm -hmm. I'll have like a full conversation. <laughs> like, girl, what are we doing right now? If, if one of your friends came up to you and gave you the same exact story, what would you be advice to that mm -hmm. girl? And whatever that advice is, run with it. Yep. And it does def it does help. It definitely it and especially like things. yeah. And especially if you're like maybe one of those people where maybe you're nervous to speak out loud, right? Because like public speaking is one of the hardest things to do. Um, even doing this, right? Yeah. Even doing this, like we're behind the camera and we're talking, but it is kind of interesting. The number of people who are very nervous to even do this, right? Yeah. And this is a safe space. There's nothing mm. here. You get, it's just some coffee and conversation. You understand? So it's just kind of, um, it's a nice way to be able to do something out loud, talking to yourself, but you can still make it in a safe space. All right. I like that. I like that. Now. Another one. Number three. Crying. Oh, shed a tear. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. You gotta Ooh. cry. You okay. Know? You gotta cry. You gotta... You know, you gotta do your own. Like an ugly cry, right? Where it like, doesn't matter. <laughs> so there's so many ways you can cry. Okay. You can punish yourself. What's that mean? Go out and run. Okay. Go out and exercise. Because exercising is exercising. So you're exercising those demons like out of you. So you're like exercising that. your thoughts and feelings. You know, you have your thoughts and feelings that you don't like about yourself. So you are self-hating. All those are your descended thoughts and feelings. And that is the whole allegory of kill your first sons and daughters. Your son, your descended thought, your daughters, your descended feelings. 
all those feelings you are having about yourself whereby you don't like yourself, you feel like you're not enough. So you have to exercise those things by exercising. So when you exercise, remember when you're exercising, you are killing that. the muscles. You are destroying mm -hmm. the tissues. Mm -hmm. You are destroying your myofibers and everything. So that now when they are recovering and growing, you are bigger, stronger, more muscular, another drama. So the same thing, you have to do it mentally now in your psyche. So you pick a spot. Mm. Pick um, a routine. Mm. And when you get in those routine, the conversations that you're having yourself is to make yourself better. So aka, you are self-improving. Oh, I didn't even see this read, this read like the Superman logo somehow yeah I oh like yeah that. on a tuesday <laughs> and the colors is red these are mm. red colors mm. tuesday you know passion mm. they are all about that passion mm. on a tuesday you know let them know let so, them know <laughs> okay so you have to cry different ways of crying there's no shame in shedding a tear sometimes all a man need to do is lock yourself in the shower let that shower run and cry like a motherfucker. Let it all out, all those tears. That's that real. That is exercising. That's real. Okay? You That's are real. washing it. You are doing your own baptism. That's real. That's for real. self. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we have all the psychologists in the world with their PhDs, EGH, whatever titles they have before the names. Remember, they are just titles because we know people who are the so-called psychologists. They are the most far fucked up. But you go to them because of the titles. But all the solutions you need are inside you. So you have to cry for yourself, a.k.a. to shed now. The word mm. is to shed. You have to mm. peel all that old you. Mm. And that means, as a man, there's no shame in being responsible. A.k.a. you had a white color job and everything, COVID came. Now it's time for you to peddle some sweets. It's time for you to roll some sausages and provide. And this is a deep ritual because what you are telling the universe is like, you don't look upon things. You are not looking down on things. You are able to stand up for yourself. And maybe that is all you need for the universe to look like, hey, he's trying. So you'll be the first one to be hit with that trying energy uh, conversation. So you'll be the first one again to rise on your feet instead of just locking yourself in the house and hiding from the world because, you know, oh, COVID came, this came, I lost my job. No, that's not the kind of crying I'm talking about. You are crying out of, uh, it's a transformation cry and shedding the old skin and admitting that this is where I am. Mm, I like that. Really get I like that. Like the other day, the other day, one of my cousins, uh, you know, he kind of like, he did some like real wild shit. You know what I mean? He like, he did some fuck shit. And he has, in my opinion, I don't think he has ever um, accepted his role and real responsibility in what he did. Mm -hmm. And because of that, there's a lot of family members who don't talk to him anymore, yeah. right? Like they don't really ask about him. They don't mm -hmm. talk about him. Uh, he's just there. So the other day, you know, he asked me, he was like, Rita, you know, he was like, everybody really hates me. You're like one of the only ones who still talks to me. And for me, I'm like, well, you, everybody should have somebody who supports them, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I had said to him, I was like, you need to do an apology tour, bro. Like you need to go and humble yourself and you need to go and apologize. And then he was like, can I tell you something? And I was like, yeah, what's up? And he was like, man, the other day he said, I cried. I got into the shower and I cried for an hour, Rita. He said, I think that's the first time I've cried in years where for all of this backed up stuff, right? Yeah. And so in essence, I agree with maybe what you're saying is that crying is a way of like shedding, you know, kind of getting rid of yeah. all of that backup that you might have had mm -hmm. inside that really just needs to be able to get out so that you can heal yourself. Yeah. So I think that that's actually really valid. So we've got three things that have been suggested, right? One. So how did he feel after crying? Did he I think he felt, felt? But, well, you know what it is? I think that actually because he cried that day, I think that's why he was able to, because he cried prior to us having this conversation, yeah, right? Yeah. So, I mean, prior to the conversation mm -hmm. that me and him had mm -hmm. had. And I actually really think that because he cried that day, I think he had opened himself up more to being able to accept that he was wrong that he's realizing why everybody in the family hates him so much, right? If I would have been his wife, I would have put my hands on him because yeah, there ain't yeah. no way you going to do all that nonsense that you did and get, and, and, and get away with it. Like, that's wild to me. But, mm. hey, guess what? He has. Um, but I do think that that has kind of helped him kind of realize um, he was wrong and that he has to do something to change it 
because if you don't do something to change it, you're still going to feel the way you've been feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's been feeling like this for the last few years. And who wants to walk around imagine? feeling, nope, yes. nope. With all that weight nope. on your shoulders. Nope. So let me break nope. down uh, what it means to cry. Mm. In the beginning was the word. So what is the word? A thought. Fire. Okay? Which is passion. It's something you're thinking about. Mm. And then what is air? Intellect. So air is intellect. So that is fire and air intellect. Okay? You know, you are left and right. Before you go to your bottom, that is your water and your earth sign. So now, that intellect and air, which is air and water, I mean, and, uh, and fire, when they come together, uh, fire and air, you have a sizzling. So now you have a steam. So these steams condenses. These are your thoughts and feelings. When they condense, they become water, heavy. So these are heavy thoughts. These are heavy feelings. That is why when you cry, they come out as liquid, dense, density. So when you cry, you're actually shedding out, you're exercising all those feelings that mm -hmm. condense into tears, heavy mm -hmm. waters, mm -hmm. feelings and, 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 um, and, and emotions. Okay, how you feel about yourself. You are emotive. You are feeling yeah. emotional. On uh, you are you are guilty. That's an emotion. You are feeling guilty of what you did to the people in the family. Mm. So when you cry and you shed, now you have more space. You are less dense. So you are actually even rising. I get that. So you are less dense. So I now you can even relate now to Rita. Now he feels he can now relate to Rita because he's an he's in, in a higher space, a better space. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's so it doesn't mm -hmm. go further than that. Mm -hmm. so. I like that. I like that. And I think that it's kind of like it's nice to be able to sometimes put words into kind of what those actions are, right? Because I think even for him, like even for him to admit that he had been crying for that much, I know that that was a lot for him yeah. to admit it, right? Yeah. And you do have to be able and to that's being a man. Space. Right. Talking about it. Right. So kudos to him. Right. And also being able to have a safe space, right? Yeah. Because I think that's the other thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. so for the three things you've said, mm -hmm. you need to be able to help. You need to be able to speak to yourself mm -hmm. out loud. And I even think that, and tell me if you would agree with me, even that speaking out loud, mm -hmm. let's say you feel funny talking to yourself out loud. Yeah. You could even journal. Yeah. Right? You could even write to yourself. Yeah. Like, I do that as well. It's like, sometimes I'll sit here, it's like, dear Rita. And then at the end of it, I tell myself all the amazing things about yeah, myself, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. but, um, and then crying. Yeah. And so I think those are actually three really big steps, but very manageable, doable steps, because those steps are also something that you can do in your own, by yourself, in a safe space, or you're able to, like you're saying, if you're going out to ask for help, to be able to identify those people who are in your life that can offer you a safe space to be yeah. able to speak. Yeah. yeah. Or even for someone like yourself, like, okay, so on Richie's channel, he does a lot of like talking and he does a lot of talking about this type of a topic, right? And that's actually why I wanted him to come and talk to you guys about it because I think it's more beneficial to hear it from a man to a man um, than from a woman telling another man, like, get it to your feelings, right? Yeah. Because this is also something that he exercises himself. And I'm sure, and I think you could probably even tell the people that even for yourself, you're more better for it, right? Yeah. Like not even to put all your business out there, but even for himself as of recently, right? His relationship with his father and how he deals with his father and how he talks with his father yeah. has been changing, right? And that's, uh, for some people that is really hard to do. For some people it's imperative to be done, but they don't do it. And so, um, in an interesting way, it's kind of like you're tapping into that femme side to be discussing your feelings so that you can also feel lighter, right? From all of the bullshit as you've gotten older, mm -hmm. right? And, and uh, so that's real. That's something real. you said. Mm -hmm. You said, if you are happy, then the people around you are going to be happy. Facts. I so, say that all the time. You also have to realize, especially for the, for, for the men, mm -hmm. I like using the men only for this video. Mm -hmm. um, if you are going to approach other men or maybe like get uh, relationships working with your father and everything, it's not going to come from the spot you are in. You have to do a lot of inner work yourself. You have to start with Facts. yourself Facts. before you face them. Facts. And for example, I've been working uh, on myself for the last five years now. And um, I don't even like my dad. I don't have to lie. But I like him. It's just that I choose to come here through him because he's not even a likable person. He's not someone <laughs> you can really like. Okay. You know, there's no shame. And you have to be also be no, accountable. You, gotta be able, no, you, gotta be okay, able you can to be it. lying. Oh, I love my father. No, I don't. Right. Because he has not been the best father. However, 
we choose our parents, we choose our location, we choose everything. That's so once okay. you start realizing that, oh, I choose, maybe I choose him so that I could learn how to work on myself to be relatable. And by doing like walking it, you know, you are walking yeah. it. So yeah. now out of walking through it, you can learn and come out with a better experience and everything. Sure. So change your mindset first. Sure. And also admit Remember when we were talking about the self-reflection, the man in the mirror, and that is very important because when, there's something about when you're talking to yourself in the mirror. There's, it's like a yeah. whole openness, yeah. like yeah. Yeah. it's just you yeah. and your reflection. Yeah. So you become the observer. Yeah. So become the observer. Don't be like, oh, you know, this is wrong. Oh, this is... No, become the observer now. Mm -hmm. Get out of that mind frame and observe your mind because remember, you're not your mind. Mm -hmm. You're just using your mind. Mm -hmm. You are not your mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. I like okay. that. I like that. That's not real. Your mind. That's real. Because then also when you're having that type of a mindset and that type of a thinking, yeah. then what you also realize is that you're never really stuck. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That you can reasonably with like those thinkings and however yeah. you're going to do it, even if you're feeling as though you are stagnant mm -hmm. in a place, if you are having those self-reflective thoughts and again, being very cognitive and aware of how you're talking to yourself, mm -hmm then everything you realize is temporary, yeah. right? Everything really is temporary, right? At that yeah, moment, it might sound yeah. really like, oh God, here we go. But that ability to, to surrender into that and knowing um, that this is only temporary and that with a little bit of work, we're going to move right through this. Yeah. It can work. I like that. Yeah. When you, like when, that. You, when you learn that you are not your mind, that is why people tell you to change your mind. You know, some yeah, things you just say without even thinking. People tell you, Rita, have you changed your mind? So why would you ask Rita to change her mind? If she was the mind, you get it? No, no, no. I totally so you're get asking it. Rita, no, 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 Rita, change your mind. Saying. So you are the observer of your mind. Mm -hmm. So once you learn that you are the observer of your mind, it even becomes easy for you to work on yourself because you now you understand that your thoughts are not yours. Your feelings are not yours. You catch thoughts. You catch feelings. So now when you become the observer, you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. So now I'm going to choose how I relate to these thoughts and feelings. Yeah. And that's that, this, yeah. these are some of the things which you'll be teaching in schools, but they don't teach you these things. So no. as we end, I'm going to say um, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> The mind is a terrible thing to waste. It is, though. It is. It is. It is. We're really born with it, and we get. We have. It has so much capacity. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, I really, I really like this. I think, gentlemen. Um. I feel like Richie has really given you guys some things to kind of maybe think about and ponder. Um. And gives you an idea of right to ask for help. Number one, ask for help. Two, talk about it. Hmm. Whether it's to yourself in a reflection or in a mirror, yeah. or whether you are writing to yourself, yeah. but talk about it and get it all out. Yeah. And last is just give yourself a good old fashioned cry. Oh, shit. <laughs> right? And you could do it anywhere you want. Anyway. Um, I'm going to definitely list all of Richie's pages in the. Um, in the little writing section so that you guys can check him out and kind of uh kind of listen to a little bit more about what he is saying how do you tap into it and what the benefits of being able to do that and how that allows for you to elevate yourself mm -hmm. get yourself out of it we are right now in times of just yuck yuck nonsense and anything and everything that you can do to get yourself out of that muck and to stay above that muck you got to do it, right? Like, you really just got to do it. Nobody wants to sit over here. Yeah. So I appreciate all of you guys taking the time today to sit and listen to us. You are here today at the TIA Marketplace. Like, subscribe, talk to your friends, tell them to come through. And I will see you guys on another time. Take care. Bye. Bye.